We're in Germany today to drive some very special BMW M cars. To start with, we've got this, which is the M2 Coupe. Next up is the M3 Touring, that's the X-Drive four-wheel drive one. These are cars we've already featured on completecar.ae, but this is a chance to spend a bit more time with them. Those cars, as I mentioned, we've already driven before. This one, we have not. This is the M3 CS, the swan song for this generation of the M3, and rather special. And to complete the quartet, you know, for research purposes, we're finishing up with this. It's the M4 CSL, the wildest looking M4 there is. I'm gonna start off with the entry level BMW M2. And I'm gonna go with the most practical one. So that's the M3 Touring, four wheel drive, big boot, enough room to scare the Labrador. Let's remind ourselves what's an M3 all about these days. So this M3 competition is the only one that's around and the M3 competition touring, <laughs> X-Drive, it's a very long-winded name, is what this is. It has the usual twin turbocharged, three litre straight six petrol engine on the bonnet. This one produces 510 horsepower. But actually, that, while that is an amazing figure, it's a phenomenal figure, what, what summarizes this car, what sums this car up, what defines how it drives is the torque, the mid-range torque. So you can just amble along at mid-range if you want, just use the middle revs, or you can go all the way to red line, then you're just doing crazy speeds, so the type you can only use in the Autobahn in Germany. But it's still great fun to drive around the place. And it's got all the driving modes that BMW M has become famous for. So you press the setup button here, you choose you know, comfort, uh, efficient, sport, sport plus for the engine, you change the chassis, you can change the steering weight, um, you can change the brake feel, and then if you turn off the traction control, which there's no point today in a beautiful dry day in the public roads here, um, you can put different modes for the four wheel drive. So you can have a sport version, a sport setting for the four wheel drive if you like, and the car does move around a little bit more, it's really good fun. And then you can actually have completely rear wheel drive. And this car gets the rather silly and over the top drift analyzer too. Regardless, it's an occasion this car. Even just ambling around in slower speeds, it is a real occasion. Now what have I got settings here? So just turn the transmission. <laughs> up to its max. So it immediately chooses the slower gear for me and it's still an automatic, um, but it's a bit more aggressive, shall we say. Then on top of that, press the setup button again here. The good thing about the iDrive, of course, you can do this without even looking half the time. So I'm putting this engine up to Sport Plus and you probably heard that it's actually a bit louder there and it's notably louder. And yeah, we think it's a bit piped in a bit through the speakers, but you don't notice. It just feels more responsive, it feels sportier, if you like, and it's huge fun. What we discovered a minute ago is that the exhaust, the sports exhaust button, has a rather large effect. So you're ambling around here, and I'm down in the 50 kilometers an hour area here. You can hear the exhaust, I'm sure, of my voice. Now, I haven't changed my speed, and I've just turned off the sports exhaust. You can feel the effect, and it's likewise the same on the outside of the car. So if you want a quiet exit on an early Sunday morning drive, you turn off the sports exhaust. Now, regardless of all the technical specifications and regardless of how fast any car is or how powerful or any of that, the M3, I think, is the one to have. It just looks astounding. The estate car body really suits it. Um, it, it the mind boggles why this is the very first M3 Touring you know, that has ever gone into production. And of course, there is a practical side to that <laughs> in that it has a 500 litre boot and the hatch, you can open the top part of the hatch as well, just the glass. So it's a very, very practical car. junior M car but for me the M2 is what a BMW M car should be it's compact it's got a punchy engine it's got great power delivery and for me it's the size that makes this car so appealing yes 
M4s and M3s have more power, but they've also become very big cars these days. And yeah, sure, if you live in the US where you've got really wide roads, it's not that much of an issue, but you know, in parts of Europe, and especially in Ireland, we have narrow roads, and suddenly cars like that can feel very big on some of them, especially the ones that are nice to drive on. This car, though, is much more compact. It feels so much more nimble. That's what I love about it. Okay, the engine does sound good. Even if it is perhaps a little bit too synthesized for my liking. This thing is quick. No bones about it. It is a very rapid car. Point to point, there's not much that will keep up with it. And what I love about this thing is just how it feels like you can really exploit the performance you can use a lot more of the power a lot more of the time because there's a little bit less power the regular new m2 only has an automatic okay the paddles work pretty well actually they're quite nice i like the kind of rubberized texture dimpled back on them and they're a decent size too and mounted to the wheel but for me this is the proper bmw m car Steering is just so good on this car. It's the one thing BMW never really feel like they disappoint us with is good steering and it's very true on this M2. It just feels great, it's precise, the nose goes exactly where you want. It just drives really, really nicely and for me this is what a car should be. Just the right balance of power, nice power to weight ratio, well balanced chassis, good brakes, good steering. It's nearly enough to make you forgive what they've done to the outside of it. Okay, M2. This car divides opinions. I... You don't like the looks, do you? No, I think it's ugly as sin. <laughs> He's <laughs> wrong. He's so wrong. <laughs> I just, I can't, I just, the, the squarishness of it all. It works. Just, for me, you know, in this color, it looks it looks okay in this yeah, color. Yeah. The baby blue one we saw, no, no, not really. I'm not, I don't love the baby blue either. I'll give yeah, you that. Yeah. But I think the overall shape, the square stance, it's got the same width as the M3, the exact same width, but it's shorter. Like, what's not to like? I know, but it's just it's all this kind of, yeah, it's just too much, you know. But I, I, you know, there are other things I like with this. The seats, mm -hmm. the seats look mm -hmm. great. Okay, I think this is the perfect size M car. Yeah, you can't disagree with that. You can't have, like, the M4, the M3 are just too big. This kind of works. It's got enough power, it's got enough performance. I desperately want them to make a CS version of this. I think they will. Your box. Hopefully they keep the manual. I don't think we'll get a manual, but we'll see. As well, a driver's car, what do you think of this? Yeah, I absolutely love it. The thing about it is, and the thing I've said before is, its, it's ability is now better than it was, yeah, which yeah. is a good and bad thing. If, if you're the kind of person that lives somewhere that can use it on the roads, or if you go on track, brilliant. Yes, yeah. If you're somebody who just uses it on the road and actually just wants it to be moving around a bit, yeah. it doesn't. The old one moves around more. Yeah, it, I mean, this is just, it. it's almost, I would like if this was a bit more ragged. Mm -hmm. Yes, a bit exactly. More, yeah. It's very polished, it's very refined. Anyway. As if it would make you feel more of the part of the equation yeah. right, at slower speeds. Yeah. I think that that's the only thing that's missing, but you can't take from it. It's just it is the junior brilliant. M car. Yeah. I don't know if it's still the best M car though. I I, I stand by the last the M2 CS, the last one, yeah. in my mind, was the best M car. But maybe the last for true BMW M well, car. Well there probably will be another M2 CS, so okay, let's, right. uh, pull that thought. Okay, next car. Yes. M3 Touring. What do we think? Finally. <laughs> Finally! I know. Can I just say the single best thing? about the M3 Touring. There you go. That's it. That's all you need. It's not the quad pipes. <laughs> it's not the engine. It's just that. 500 litres of luxe space. <laughs> Look at your space. This thing... So special. I know everybody, I know, every, including us, we've hated on BMW design for the last <laughs> couple of years. Forget about the front. From behind, this thing looks so good. Oh so good like it's it all is you need. it's all you need this is i can't believe i i 
I don't understand why they waited so long to do this. It makes no sense. It is, it's so good. This is a BMW no-brainer to make this car. It looks superb. These humongous arches, those wheels, you come around the back, all the, it's just, it's all diffuser, it's all pipe. It's just it's exactly what you want from a BMW M car. This thing is just, it's got so much breadth. Yeah, like I, like I said earlier in the video, it is definitely, it's the one to have. It's the same thing to have. I don't care about power outputs. 500 net horsepower is enough, let's face it. It's just the one to have because it looks so special. It feels so special. And because of this boot, you can actually go shopping. You can bring the kids somewhere, whatever. Yeah, you know, you, yeah. it, you can, it, it can fit into life, theoretically. So it just makes it the best M3 by far. I love it. I think this is potentially one of the coolest M cars since the E61 M5 Touring. Wow, that's uh, quite a statement. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've plenty more to come. Another two very special M cars, and then we'll finish up for a couple of days. Let's go driving. Things are about to get more serious now as we move on to the big boys of the M range. First up is the M3 CS. It's lighter than a regular M3 saloon. It's got more power. It's got loads of extra special carbon bits and it looks insane in the signal green color. It's got 550 horsepower, so it's 40 horsepower up on the regular M3. And we think it's gonna be a bit of a beast. Okay, we've had the M2, we've had the M3 Touring, the M3 CS, now the M4 CSL. This is the daddy of BMW M cars at the moment, and it just looks so much more aggressive looking than a, even a regular M4, which is no saint when you look at it. Okay, exposed carbon here on the bonnet. It looks really good, especially in the black with a little bit of red around it. We won't have any mention of 18 band references. That follows through the roof carbon door mirrors around the back. One of my favorite features is the fact that it has a carbon boot with this integrated ducktail, very reminiscent obviously of the last CSL. Again, this is carbon as well to save a little bit of weight. I also really like these two kind of spines here. It sounds really, really mean, but one other feature, two other features in fact, that I really like. This has totally different rear lights and you can even see the little laser warning symbols here. Bit of a nerdy thing, but I really like that. What people will like or won't like is the fact that inside you get obviously the sports seats, but you get no rear seats in this in order to save weight. So last night when we showed you us getting into the cars, we had a very, very quick drive just to the hotel. And within two minutes, it was clear how much more senior these two cars are over the M2 Coupe we drove yesterday and the M3 Touring. These are a different level altogether. Those two are road cars and amazingly fast, powerful road cars. These two are really feel like track refugees and they're amazing. This morning we got up at dawn and drove a couple of hours up here into the, into the mountains and use a lot of Autobahn and it's, these things are insanely powerful. Only in Germany can you do this. And also it kind of makes sense why these cars are like they are because the Germans have the Autobahn. We'll talk a bit more about the driving in a minute when we go out and about in these mountains, but let's have a look at them. Look at these yellow lights. <laughs> it is just insane that BMW homologated them like this because they look amazing and actually when you see one of these cars in your rear view mirror, you're gonna move out of the way. You can see the big grill, the aggressive spoilers, and these lights, and it looks astounding. It's got massive, massive presence. Jury's out on which is better, and in fact, we came into this expecting the M3 CS to be effectively a saloon version of the M4 CSL, but it's not. They're very, very different cars. The 
M3, for instance, rides on road tyres, Michelin Pilot Sport, etc. But they are road tyres. Whereas this, they are road tyres, they are road legal, but they're cup oars. They're very, very, very much made for dry road or track. And you kind of feel that unless they're warmed up too. Top of that, as Dave already mentioned, we got into the car, there are no rear seats in the back of the M4. And it just makes the car feel a bit more extreme. The M3 has X-Drive, has four-wheel drive. And so it doesn't feel as extreme. It feels more like a road car, but really just about. Anyway, let's continue with our driving. We'll talk a bit more about it as we go. Now we spent a few more hours in these cars and um, yeah, I think we've got the measure of them. They're, <laughs> they're definitely senior. What I'm a bit surprised by is how different the M3 CS is to the M4 CSL. It's a completely different beast, really. It's the same 550 horsepower engine, same performance, supposedly, but straight line speed means nothing. And I know I mentioned that with the Autobahn earlier, but realistically, it's the excitement that these cars generate, even at normal speeds. I mean, you're taking it out of the garage, the cold start sounds ridiculous. You know, you're taking it out of the garage, everybody's looking at it. It's got a, this low to the ground stance. And even just driving around at normal speeds, it's a real occasion. And I think Dave will pick up a bit more on this as well, that we came here, you know, to talk about the four different M cars we got to drive and, you know, trying to choose the different personalities and which one we like best and which one suits different people. But we come away kind of thinking, oh my God, are we saying goodbye to this era of motoring where you've got this level of technology and performance accessible to mere mortals um, and yet the performance that these cars can generate I'm, I'm pretty sure that very <laughs> experienced race drivers and others will also get a lot out of them their incredible performance incredible ability um, but back to the cars themselves the M3 CS is see, feels in personality a little bit it's between the regular M3 perhaps, and the M4 CSL. So it's not quite as extreme as the M4 CSL, um, but it's certainly far more senior than the regular M3 saloon. Um, but it's quite civil, actually. I mean, I've got the engine set at Sport Plus mode at the moment, which is probably why I'm having to raise my voice so you can hear me, um, and the exhaust is in the sport setting. But, you know, we've driven for a few hours, and sure, the German motorways and roads are generally better than ours anyway, so even on this back road, the surface is better, and. You can use the sports setting of the chassis if you really want to, but it doesn't matter. It's just comfortable to do these long distances in if you want, but you'll, you'll do, you will do those distances to seek out exciting roads. It's the car you'll want to drive for the sake of driving. And I know Dave was giving out about these seats. I mean, maybe he's just getting old, but, um, and they are, you know, they are compromised in your terms of getting in and out. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to break a button off the back of my trousers here getting into them. But they're not uncomfortable when you're in. And even though after doing long distances, they're not uncomfortable. Um, and they hold you in place considerably better than the standard seats that you find in, for instance, the M2 Coupe that we drove yesterday. And they're all part of the equation. I mean, this M3 CS, it still has rear seats. Um, it still has a decent sized boot. You don't have to go for this lurid green color and you could have a relatively subtle sports saloon that can do family duties can do normal life just as much as anything else uh, and then when you have the right road or get to go on track it is something really rather special it's perhaps not quite as much a track car as the m4 csl because of the four-wheel drive which i know you can switch to two-wheel drive but even so um, it's a bit heavier as well than that car well, it's still astounding to drive. It's, it's a very special car and um, enthusiasts everywhere will be sad when you can't buy cars like this anymore. So for one last drive, we turn the gearbox up to its highest. If the engine is four plus, wait till you hear this. I really hope the microphone can pick up the noise that this makes.
probably hear how razor sharp the throttle hit response is. It's too much when you're driving around town, actually. And you're, if you're hesitant at all, it puts a little vibration through the powertrain. As if to say, come on, come on, is that the best you can do? It's, it's only really for track. The M4 CSL is much more than just an M4 with a fancy ducktail. This thing really moves. Boy, is this thing quick. This is a very senior car. What I mean by that is that it just handles everything so well. It is ballistically quick. And when you have everything turned up, so the engine at the moment now is in the Sport Plus mode. Interestingly, I've got the chassis set to comfort. It's quite a nice balance. Dial up the gear shift as well, give it a little bit more harshness just for that added effect. And this thing is just phenomenal. On a good twisty road like this, it just eats it up. And the combination of that suspension setup and crucially those tires just mean that this thing is absolutely nailed to the road it, it gives you so much confidence and it just makes you want to drive it on that bit more the m2 in comparison to what we drove yesterday it does feel very very junior to this but you can't really compare them they're two totally different machines this is a seriously well-rounded piece of equipment. Okay, the CSL name, people might think, ah, come on, they're just tying into the whole marketing of it, but no, no, no. This is a very hardcore car if you want it to be. Now, granted, you can dial things back, put it into a bit more of a comfort mode, and it does become quite civilized. Yes, the ride is a little bit firmer anyway, so, there's a little bit more busyness there. And the one thing you'll really notice in day-to-day -day driving with this car over, say, a regular M4 competition is that inside, it is that bit noisier. Now, you can turn off the exhaust and have it a little bit quieter. And yes, that does make it a bit more civilized, but you start to notice things like the fact that there's less sound insulation in the car. You're more aware of the road noise. Obviously, the fact that there's no rear seats and it means that that sound kind of booms around a little bit more in the back and you even notice things like stones being flung up into the wheel arches off those sticky rubber tires but it all kind of adds to it and it does make this car feel that bit more special even in the regular humdrum daily stuff i think if you have a car like this you're gonna feel that it's that bit more special than just a regular m4 now there are things that I have to say if I was living with it, it would really annoy me mainly these seats yes they're very comfortable but god getting in and out of them is a right pain if you're not going to start moving the seat back and forth so that's a little bit annoying but really I mean there's not a lot to annoy you about this car perhaps other than the price As I've mentioned earlier in this video, I have gone on record numerous times as saying the last generation M2 CS with a manual transmission was in my top three drives. The only thing is, I think that car is now in danger of potentially losing a spot because this thing, man, it goes. The grip is tremendous in this thing. It goes, everything about this is just at warp speed. The brakes, the steering, the feedback, the gear shifts. It just moves at a phenomenal rate. This is a massive step change up from even a regular M4. The noise inside, the cacophony. You just wanna play with this thing all the time. You use gears more than you normally would because it's just 
so damn good. <laughs> BMW have done an astonishing job with this car. It is phenomenal. And when you get it on a road like this, this is what driving is all about. And this, unfortunately, I've got to say, these days are numbered because no EV on the planet will give you this kind of experience. Yes, EVs may be quicker in a straight line, but they don't deliver the emotion that this thing can. The involved feeling that you get from this car is really hard to match. We now have both spent quite a bit of time in all the cars and this is the M3 CS. What do you think of it, Dave? This, it's got a really good balance. It's definitely a step up from the M3 competition. No doubt about it. It feels that bit more focused, that bit more finesse to it. Yeah. But it still has all the sort of usability that an M car is meant to have. You know, mm. you could absolutely drive this every single day, no problem at all. But it just has those little things that are just dialed it up a little yeah. bit more, you know, and that's, I think that's the thing with this that, okay, maybe, you know, in a more subtle cue <laughs> and all that kind of stuff, but it could be a little bit more under the radar. Right now though, as it is, I actually kind of love it for this. I love that it's, you know, this vibrant green, the stripes on it. The yellow lights. The yellow lights. The yellow lights, the yellow lights. <laughs> yellow lights alone. But even, you know, just how this car sits on yeah, the road. It's great stance. It just has so much stance. I mean, the speeds we carried on the Autobahn mm. today, no problem in this thing at all. Like, it's so stable, isn't it? So stable, so easy. And yet a couple of hours at the wheel, you're, you're not sore, yeah, you're not yeah, tired. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, you know, even, I mean, the road surfaces are good, but even in a sports setting, it's usable. You can yeah. drive it. Yeah. And of course, it's probably the most relevant here with extra four-wheel drive to the Irish market, to wet roads. Yeah. You could use it every day. Yeah. And most people could use it every day, quite happily. I like that you can dial this up, but then equally, you know, you can quieten down the exhaust, you can pull everything into comfort, and suddenly it's a very, I don't want to say sedate, sedate is the wrong <laughs> it's word. Definitely not sedate. There's nothing sedate about this. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it's just like, yeah, do you know what? Maybe today I'm not really into driving a 10 tenths, yeah. and I'm just going to take it easy. And it goes, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I said in my, when I was driving it to the camera a minute ago. I mentioned that you could bring the family out and it could be your family car. Yeah, yeah. It has a decent boot, has the seats in the back. Yeah. But then when you find the right road or a track or whatever, yeah. it's, it's yeah. proper fast. Yeah. They will never know what this car is capable of. <laughs> not green though, not in green. Right, well, the last car of the four and it's the big daddy. Out, yeah, it's <laughs> turned out to be a surprising winner. I think so. I think it's a very worthy winner. Like we knew from the outset, this obviously is special, mm -hmm. but I kind of, I was definitely up to thinking this is just a different version of Same. the M3 CS, but man, these are two different cars. They're talking cheese, aren't the they? The characteristics are totally different. This is so hardcore. It's really aggressive. It's, yeah. The throttle it response, the, the suspension, the tires. Right down the to noise. the noise inside. Yeah, the noise inside just to pick up of it any speed any gear and yeah. it just surges forward and i think that that's yeah it like, makes it exciting doesn't it It does make it exciting and i'm kind of glad it, it it justifies the csl name mm -hmm. i think that's the one thing because you know all of us love the, the last csl yeah. big boots to fill big boots to fill it's it's i mean it, this is kind of like ferrari using a gto name <laughs> yeah, you know like I, you've got to like yeah. you can't mess around with this they have not messed around no, with this thing. This is a proper, proper car. It's so extreme. No, it's not as everyday as the M3CS. Definitely not. No, no, no. But I think I'd have it. Would you? Yeah. I, like, that's, <laughs> that, I said like it isn't as usable in terms of like the seats. And yeah, yeah. sure, I'm getting old. But I think, <laughs> let's, let's be honest, right? But that said, I actually love that. I think actually it is that kind of rawness to mm. it. Yeah, I have to agree that, with that. I would actually would drive that every day. I think it's only a few of us would, but if you get it, you get it. If you do like what we do, keep watching. Obviously, there's loads more on the Complete Car YouTube channel, but you'll also find lots on our website. It's completecar.ie, and it's a great resource for choosing your next new car.